But as you come up to ten, that is their god. That is ten. That is the hermaphrodite. But if you stop at nine and you skip to eleven, skipping god, then you are a Luciferian. Because uh-huh. eleven is the number of the magician. It's the one step above. Once you have accomplished the tree of life, you are now the magician. You are one above ten. But they're doing it by skipping god. That's the symbolism of nine, eleven. idea, a new world order. We were all decided we were supposed to kill two birds with one stone. In Fight Club, Project Mayhem destroys a giant bronze spherical sculpture. This seems an obvious reference to the sphere at the World Trade Center complex. Trust me. Everything's gonna be fine. In a pivotal scene reminiscent of 9-11, we see the destruction of skyscrapers and the change of a skyline. Second anniversary of the 9-1-1 attack on the World Trade Center, George Bush asked for an 87 billion dollar increase in military spending. In 1904, Crowley would receive the Book of the Law soon after meditating in the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid. He claimed he had been contacted by a being called Iwas. Crowley would also use this symbol in his work. Some of its meanings are said to include a reference to the number 77 in Hebrew and a connection to the god Pan. Crowley made this drawing of a non-human intelligence he saw during a ritual. Synchronous 23 has made the connection between Iwas and the Wizard of Oz and has further pointed out the similarities between Crowley's grey alien-like drawing and the depiction of the projection of the Wizard of Oz in the film version. The much overlooked theory has been put forward on the internet that when we are looking at George W. Bush we are actually seeing Alistair Crowley's grandson. I have suggested that this video footage of George W. Bush reading The Pet Goat coinciding with the start of the 9-11 mega ritual is in fact a dedication of the 9-11 mega ritual to the great god Pan by Alistair Crowley's grandson. Arriving at the end of the yellow brick road, Dorothy and her companions go through the circular portal. Through the door, we see three pyramids. Behind the pyramid shape, in between the pyramid pillars of the World Trade Center, we see the sphere. The representation of the Kaaba. The inhabitants of Oz dance around the sphere in ritualistic fashion. Fashioned in giant letters over the dome of the sphere, we see the word Oz. Oz, symbols of Pan and Awaz, seen smack at the heart where the new Aeon was ushered in and 
where the Stargate was opened. Towers is called the Spherical Karyatid. It was made by artist Fritz Kunich and was nicknamed the Sphere. We see that Kunich made this thing in Bavaria, the same place where the Illuminati was founded. The most interesting fact about the placement of the Sphere at the World Trade Center Plaza has to be that architect and designer of the World Trade Center, Minoru Yamasaki, intended the plaza itself to be a representation of the Grand Mosque of Mecca. The sphere, in particular, taking the place of the Kaaba. start placing your faith and your dedication to the one and only God, the everlasting creator of everything on earth and in the universe. He is greater than anything our minds can comprehend. Do you know how many times Muslims are required to circle the Kaaba and visit it? Seven times, each counterclockwise. Would you like to know why? You see, what binds us as humans to this life and to this dimension and to this earth is the limits of time and space. We are bound to this dimension and this reality through time and space. Hence, if one wants to leave this dimension or leave this reality, he needs to break away from time and space. So when you visit the Kaaba and you rotate, counterclockwise, what is this practice actually doing? It is literally helping you elevate your soul and elevating yourself to break away from time and space so you can touch something so unique and so beautiful and so powerful that it changes your life forever. And if you don't believe me, ask anyone who has visited the Kaaba how he or she felt or how their lives have changed ever since.